This is what Arabella looked like in the summer of 2017. No planks, no molds, no bow or stern timbers. The lofting floor was still getting use and the ballast scale was just a pile of lead that we had been scavenging. Today, we're turning back the clock to take a look at what we've done over the last two and a half years of building this boat. That'd be really nice for this. The ads. I think the handle's here. That's why I wear the boots. With the keel timber cut to size, we started assembling and gluing up the pieces for the bow timbers. This was the first tank we made to try and melt the lead for the keel, which didn't work out, but in the end, it ended up being the perfect steam generator. It was critical when we bent the frames, but its first job was to shape the pieces that make up the largest of our bow timbers. In October of 2017, the short film we made, which is actually the recap of our first year and a half, won the prize for the Bucksport Maritime Film Festival. We also got to spend time with our friend Anne, and she took me out for my first sale. Steve still plans on waiting to have his first sail on Arabella, but we visited a few on the docks, like this double ender that has a lot of the same design elements as our boat will have. Its name is Fleckeroy and is our friend Claren Bjornar's boat. Around this time, we also hooked up with James Sound Distributors. They've been really great to work with and always willing to help a couple guys that have never done this sort of thing before. 
Oh yeah, and we bought a boat. Victoria at her final destination in our front yard that fall. We put up a big tarp to keep her dry and got to work pulling out all of the bronze and useful parts that we're going to make very good use of later. This Norway spruce was planted by Steve's great-grandfather. When the time comes, it will be used to make our main mast. Just a pound or two of lead. Most of you know what this is, but in case you don't, this is the time that we melted about 9,000 pounds of lead and poured it into a form that we had dug into the ground for our lead keel. Careful, you don't want to encase those rods either. It was toxic and terrifying, and we were very glad to get that job done. But then we had a 9,500 pound hunk of lead that we had to try to move around. Watch yourself, it's gonna go. We flattened and later painted the bottom of the keel timber to make it ready to match up with the ballast keel in the dead wood. That winter, we took to the woods to do a big round of logging. We want as much of the lumber that we use to be able to season properly, so we really tried to get as much as we could. wouldn't have been able to do this if it weren't for Peter and his logging skitter. More of our neighbors had become aware of our project, and one that ran an excavation company 
had some perfect pine logs and wondered if we might have a use for them. Which we did. And then once sawmilling and the deadwood is done, we can flip the keel assembly back right side up and start putting on the balance stern timbers. And at that point, it'll actually start to look like a boat, which would be really cool. We had our second open house that spring, and one of the best new friends that we had met that day came over to buy a t-shirt. Joe started working with us from that point on, and his engineering and machining experience has been a huge part of what we've accomplished since then. Can you, Alex, can you get on that bottle jack? I don't want to set it all the way down, but can we go and get it closer? You ready? With the lead keel placed upside down on the keel timber, we started making the deadwood that will go both fore and aft of the ballast. Our friend Reese came by and put in a lot of work on the aft deadwood, getting that started for us while Steve was still finishing the forward piece. Spring became summer, and we called in the sawmill to get through everything that we had harvested that winter. Back in the boathouse, we finished shaping the aft deadwood. After that, we glued up the pieces for the stern timber. Yeah, it's, once we get things cinched down, we can take the gloves off. Oh, now they're coming. Okay. Yeah. It's it was time to start putting it all together, and we bedded the keel timber on top of the ballast and the deadwood, and then bolted everything down. We even cut and threaded our own bronze bolts and used them to complete Arabella's backbone. And by mid-August of 2018, we had installed the bow and stern timbers. All right, so 16 feet, 11 inches, and 3 eighths? Yep. How far off do you think we are? I don't know, probably not that close. I wouldn't think so either. <laughs> There's a lot. All right, 16 feet, 11 inches, holy <laughs> three eighths. No way. Yeah. Oh my God, that is spot on.
having the backbone all put together was a very big moment for us, and it was all starting to look like a boat. Even more so after we set up the molds. We pulled up the lofting floor so that there was room to build a second story in the boathouse. And at the beginning of fall, we were ready to do the first big round of steamed frames. We'll tie a rope in the middle of it and we'll hook it to the ratchet strap and we'll run it underneath and we'll chain it, we'll wrap it around on the other side. And then I can drop the frame in, put the two by four in, pull it tight, crank, 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 lever that in and then I'll bend over the top. Ready? Right, right, yep. You're good, right there. You're good. Boom. Well, um, we good? No? Yep. Yeah, that's Yay. Funny. Down she goes. Down she goes. Let's see if we can put the twist in it. We even built a press that can make four of our copper rivets at once, and we started making 4,000 or so that we'll need throughout the building process. We found some cedar nearby that we plan to use for the planking stock. We had the sawmill come again, and we set them up to dry out in the garage. We'll continue with the second part of our two and a half year recap in the next episode, where the bronze will become the floor timbers and everything else since then. <laughs>